Hi! In today's lecture, we are going to look at the Lux Flood model of acids and bases. Let's begin! Okay, so you have here the Lux Flood theory, and this model is actually uh, quite different from what you have seen so far because this one is devoted to solventless acid base reactions, particularly those involving oxides. And in the Lux Flood model, an acid is considered to be an oxide acceptor while a base is considered to be an oxide donor. So to illustrate that, I have here a reaction. Here is the removal of sand using calcium oxide in this thesis of iron. So you have the reaction of calcium oxide, this is an oxide, and silicon dioxide, and what you form is calcium silicate. Now, what can you see from the reaction is it's as if your oxygen from your calcium oxide is donated to silicon dioxide. And then you now have the formation of your silicate as your oxyanion. So you can say that your calcium oxide is a base since it donated the oxide to silicon. And then you have your silicon dioxide as your acid. So in the Lux flood setup, the non-oxygen element in the acid oxide will then become part of the oxyanion. So there will be a combination. So you have the cationic. Uh, the cation as part of or coming from the Lux flood base, and then you have your Lux flood acid becoming an oxyanion upon accepting an oxide. So if you have here, say, aluminum oxide and sodium oxide in the presence of heat, what is the expected product? Which between the two is the Lux flood acid? Which between the two is the Lux flood base? So here is a general guide on how you can determine which is the acid and which is the base. So a Lux flood acid is typically your P block oxide, or it can be an early transition metal oxide, whereas a Lux flood base is an S block oxide or a late transition metal oxide. So looking back at our example, which between aluminum oxide and sodium oxide is the Lux flood acid? Again, I'll give you time to think. So the Lux flood acid in this reaction is obviously your aluminum oxide. And if that is the case, it will accept the oxide coming from sodium oxide to become an oxyanion. So as you can see, this is now your product from the reaction of sodium oxide and aluminum oxide. The oxide or the oxygen part in sodium oxide is now gone and it's now donated to your aluminum oxide and that's why you see NaAlA2 as the product, the main product. So this is just a simplification that NaAlO2 is actually just a simplification from the Na2Al2O4 that is uh, the resulting uh, compound when you add simply add sodium oxide and aluminum oxide. 